Hello folks. How are you? We, are so excited with our recent purchase from Planet Crevette. Remember those shallow tanks we built for Caradina shrimps? Well today we received the new collection of shrimps and we'll add those together. We got three types of tiger shrimps, we'll go over the overview of each and the acclimation methods. Oh my! How nice it is to open a hobbyist package! First let me start by a huge thanks to Planet Creveta Quebec based shrimp importer and breeder. I will link to their website in the description. The package arrived in less than 24 hours. All shrimps were healthy and in a very good condition. Let's unpack them and start the acclimation process. Small breeding boxes or food containers come in handy for this scenario. It is always better to acclimate outside of the aquarium. This will give you some time to monitor the shrimps and do your water testing before dropping them in the tank. The regular process is to cut the bag and empty the content in the container, making sure to avoid any physical shock to the shrimps. And, as a precaution always look carefully in the bag to make sure none of the shrimp was left hanging. While watching those nice footages, I will go ahead and talk about the species. This magnificent Caradina canonensis species certainly lives up to its name. The translucent body of red tiger, black tiger, or tangerine tiger shrimp with vividly colorful stripes makes them a fantastic eye-catcher to brighten up any shrimp tank. They're not the simplest shrimp to keep, but they're well worth the effort if you're a seasoned shrimp keeper. Do not panic yet. The genes distinguish the tangerine tiger from the black and red tigers. Tangerine tigers get their black color from Neocaradina serrata shrimp, and when they're mated with Taiwan bee shrimp, they produce crystal blacks. On the other hand, red and black tiger shrimp are derived from Maria E. tiger, which lacks the black line, and when crossed with Taiwan B. shrimp, they produce fancy tigers. The number one rule for caring for those shrimps is patience. Leave them alone, just like any other shrimp. When feeding the shrimp, try to avoid poking in and out of the aquarium. Aside from that, maintaining proper water quality is essential. Tiger shrimp prefer slightly acidic water with a pH of 6 to 7 pH. They can live in both low and high acidic environments. Most shrimp keepers find that 6 to 7 works best. More than the pH, the KH should be between 0 and 3, with the lower the better and the less fluctuating the better for longevity. In terms of GH, those shrimp want hard water, so something in the 5s or 6s in terms of general hardness is ideal. TDS is generally around 130 for B shrimp, they can handle greater TDS up to 300. But low TDS in the 80s range can be stressful, especially during molting. A room temperature of 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, 68 to 74 Fahrenheit, is desirable, and temperature fluctuations are the worst adversary. Make every effort to maintain the temperature constant. The tigers are algae feeders, and although we provide them adequate pewter supplements, I will include a link in the description. However, they are still stressed after their trip. We'll wait a day or two before starting to feed it. We'll talk more about feeding and breeding in future videos. Also try to give more tips as they grow in our tanks. For now, let us stay on the acclimation and introduction side of things. Thank again to Planet Crevette. The quality of the shrimps is awesome. Also I noticed those white balls in the bags, they told me it's some kind of water conditioners. Something like Purigen most probably. So as the shrimps are well settled in the container. Here is what you need for the acclimation process. There are several methods for acclimation. We usually use the drip acclimation with valve control. Here we will show three different ways to achieve that. The first one being an airline tubing with a knot on one end to control the flow. Same thing can be achieved by using a valve control instead of a knot. It is better in terms of accuracy and ease of use. But you might not always have a control valve on hand. Also any tube can be attached to the tank using a suction cup. The last method is by using a measuring cup, taking water from the tank and adding it slowly to the container every 5 minutes. It is also an easy way to do it, but I usually get impatient and start pouring more water to get it done faster. The process is straightforward, put one end of the tube in the hosting tank. Siphon out the water, and regulate the knot or the valve to a 1 drip per second. On average it'll take around an hour for the container water to resemble the tank water. The timing isn't only one hour, it varies based on the water parameters you are trying to achieve. 
For instance lowering pH from 7 to 5 takes way longer than getting it from 6.5 to 6. And so on. Methods described in this video, should yield the same. While waiting for the water to attain the desired values. You can do your water testing. A pH and TDS pen can be used to constantly monitor the pH, whereas KH, GH, and other parameters can be checked using test strips which gives quick results. pH pen meters, takes around 5 minutes to give proper results, if not continuously monitoring. So you can test the aquarium water and then place the pH pen in the container, checking it often to make sure it attains the same values of the tank. The test strips are perfect for this scenario, they give a quick reading. Enough information, to either tell you, your tank water is good or the container water is ready. Some might keep the tank running and making sure it mimics the suppliers. Aquariums, are not always the same. Hence, why we prefer to acclimate based on our water conditions and not recreate the supplier's water parameters. Nevertheless, we can see here that Planetus Crevette has nearly identical water parameters to ours. It is also important to mention. The tanks you see in this video, have been cycled for almost 3 months now. They are mature enough with biofilm and nitrifying bacteria, to make it safe for the shrimps. Cool. Now, that we know the shrimps are acclimated, we can proceed by netting them, and carefully transferring them to the tank. No need to transfer the water even though it has the same parameters. There might be toxins sometimes due to travel. Just put the net in the tank and give time for the shrimp to swim out of it. Maybe a soft shaking or two, but nothing too aggressive. The shrimp has tiny legs, and they might be stuck in the net, shaking is gonna harm them. Give them some time. As you noticed, we are adding those shrimps to shallow tanks. Those tanks have two golden bee shrimp each, our objective is to breed the bees with the tigers and see what we can get. More on that in later videos. Awesome so far. Zero losses. And look at the quality and colors of this shrimp. Look at the legs, see the red stripes on them. Those are high quality shrimps carefully selected and sourced. Thank you my friend. And on that I have to end the video for this week. Stay tuned for more. And if you want, like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye. Au revoir. Enjoy.